this could be the future of transport. How you get to work in the morning or maybe to the airport in time for your flight. But instead of getting into a car with a driver on the road, you get into a fully autonomous aerial vehicle in the sky. This is the sixth generation WISC aircraft, an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that's designed to take off from vertiports anywhere in a crowded city and get you where you need to go, all for roughly $3 per passenger mile. WISC says the Gen 6 is the world's first self-flying, all-electric four-passenger EV toll. An air taxi that will redefine transportation and reshape the skies. High-flying aviation meets on-demand ground transport, making a short hop flight as easy as ordering an Uber. The problem we're trying to solve is super congested cities like LA, New York, London, Mumbai, Sao Paulo where you're stuck in a car for an hour and a half or two hours, you might have 20 to 40 miles to go and you have no idea when you're gonna to get to the other end. And so our flights are designed to be 10 to 20 minutes, roughly, and it's self-flying, so there's no pilot. It's an ambitious goal and one that will need a lot of community buy-in. We'll need to rethink the way we design cities and individual passengers will need to put their faith in the machine. But WISC says it's the company to do it and the Gen 6 aircraft is the vehicle to get us there. We went behind the scenes at WISC for an up-close look at how this vision for the future will actually work. WISC was born out of Kitty Hawk, the aviation company created by Google co-founder Larry Page. After creating five generations of aircraft, including its fifth-gen autonomous concept known as Cora, Kitty Hawk joined forces with Boeing in 2019 to create WISC, a company focused entirely on autonomous aviation. Kitty Hawk shuttered in 2022, but its designs and prototypes stayed with WISC. And now the company has built on those prototypes with Gen 6, the aircraft it plans on taking to market and flying en masse. With Gen 6, WISC did a major redesign. It increased the wingspan up to 50 feet from Cora's 33 feet and made the cabin bigger, carrying four passengers instead of two. And while WISC stuck with the electric vertical takeoff and landing or EV toll design of the previous generation, it totally redesigned the propulsion. Forget everything you know about a traditional aircraft, which taxis along a runway for a long takeoff like that. With an electrical vertical takeoff and landing aircraft like this one, you've got propellers that provide you that vertical lift. Then these propellers at the front here rotate around to give you propulsion in flight. The idea is that you can forget the runway, you just take off vertically, fly through the air, and then land straight back down. The other big focus for WISC is autonomy. While there are plenty of companies vying for dominance in the EV toll space, many of them are starting out with pilots behind the controls. Instead, WISC says its first flights will be unpiloted, taking off, flying and landing autonomously. But there will still be humans in the loop. Each aircraft will be overseen by multi-vehicle supervisors, working on the ground and watching as many as 10 aircraft at once. Think of the supervisors that we have on the ground, they're more like air traffic controllers. They're just watching the planes, they're seeing if there's any emergencies or any things where they have to intervene, but for the most part they won't, they'll just watch. According to WISC, 93% of pilot controls in commercial aircraft today are already automated. They say going fully autonomous with vehicle supervisors on the ground watching multiple aircraft at once is not as much of a leap as we may think. You could think about it as that pilot has stepped out of the aircraft and offloaded those repetitive tasks that weren't really the best use of their capabilities, let's say. Full automation doesn't just mean taking off, steering and keeping the plane stable. According to WISC, computers have been doing those jobs for decades. With this aircraft, the company also had to create a system capable of more high-level tasks that a pilot would normally handle. Things like looking for hazards, being aware of other aircraft and flight paths and changing course if a hazard appears. But the automation is still based on strict logic. It's not just sort of thinking arbitrarily by itself and deciding it wants to land at a different place today versus yet, you know, yesterday, right? Um, it's all very kind of procedural and rule-based. So no matter what happens, even if we lose our link to the ground, 
the aircraft is able to maintain safe flight and landing. Still, no crew in the plane means a very different flight experience for passengers. All the information is going to come through on this screen rather than a flight attendant walking down the aisle to talk to you because I don't know if you can see, but there is no aisle on this aircraft. So the idea is that you get your safety messages, you can even speak to a concierge. Uh, there's a help button above me because, of course, there's no one physically in the plane. All of this is managed by a controller down on the ground. So while there's no pilot, there is a human in the loop in this system but I'm just in here with my fellow passengers. Can't smoke. Is anyone still trying to smoke on a plane anyway? Sitting in the cabin of the Gen 6 feels a lot like sitting in a new car, minus the steering wheel. But while it might feel like an autonomous vehicle, Whisk says unpiloted aircraft are a long way from full self-driving cars. The space that we're operating in, literally the sky, is like completely wide open when you compare it to how cluttered our ground environment is. There's clear airspace that's defined, there's processes for interacting with air traffic control, and none of that exists on the ground. It's sort of like, a, you know, the Wild West, honestly, when you're out there driving on the 101. Not only that, but WISC needs FAA certification to fly. That means having strict procedures built into its autonomous systems so the plane can handle any eventuality. It also means meeting a standard called 10 to the minus 9, or a 1 in 1 billion chance of having an accident. But getting the FAA on side is only part of the picture. A city full of air taxis is a big change from today. Vertiports for taking off and landing, infrastructure that supports last mile transport in the skies, all of that requires a lot of community buy-in. But Whisk is optimistic. Less roadways, less bridges, less parking structures. Can you turn things into parks in city centres? So we have kind of a different view of it that this is actually an incredible positive that we can transform cities to be more multi-purpose instead of just like concrete and asphalt. This Gen 6 aircraft is just a demo model. There are no batteries and it can't fly. To become a citywide transport solution, WISC is going to need scale. That's one of the reasons it's going autonomous. The thinking is, when you don't need one highly trained pilot for every four passengers in an aircraft, you can get more air taxis in the sky. But it's also hoping that backing from Boeing will help it reach the scale it needs. And it has big targets. We're going to do a 20-city rollout within the first five years of launch, and we expect to have a little less than 5,000 aircraft moving close to, by 2035, close to 300 million passengers. And so it's not that hard to scale this if we make it affordable, we make it UberX-like pricing. But plenty of companies have had this dream, and plenty have closed or consolidated along the way. Not least of all, Kitty Hawk. After a decade of building aircraft and starting the Whisk joint venture with Boeing, Kitty Hawk announced it was winding down its business in September 2022. Dyson says the move doesn't have any impact on Whisk and that all Kitty Hawk's patents have stayed with the new company. But there's no doubt there's a lot of upheaval in this space. In fact, one company, SMG Consulting, even has an advanced air mobility reality index, ranking how likely it is that each company in the industry will get something off the ground, literally. For what it's worth, Whisk was ranked sixth as of August 2022. Can Whisk get 300 million passengers in the sky by 2035? Well, it'll need to build the aircraft, get them certified, and convince the community. That's a lot of people to get on board, even before the first passenger. So would you get into an unpiloted, autonomous aerial vehicle that takes off vertically from a vertiport around the city? I'm kind of excited by the concept. It certainly feels weird, but then I suppose getting into a total stranger's car felt weird when Uber first hit town. Maybe this is just the next iteration of travel. Who knows? Whether we see it in the air anytime soon? That is the big question. Driver, I'm ready. Oh wait, there's no driver. <laughs>